Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, today in the Beastie Room, we are going to have a feeding video. Now, this has been requested so many times of late. Um, it seems, or it would appear, that you all crave to see our lovely spiders having their dinner. So, what we've done is we've um, made a little compilation of uh, a few feeding clips. Um, we do tend to feed um, or film quite a few of our spiders when they're feeding, and we do different little bits and pieces with them. Um, so today what we've done is we've, we've literally pulled a few together and we put them in. Now normally we would do these up down to music, um, but I thought today we'd have a little, uh, we'd talk our way through them. So, right, here we go. Sit back and hopefully you will enjoy some of these lovely spiders getting their dinner. I'll see you soon. Now this is a one of the giants of the hobby, the Therophosa Sturmi. And as you can see there, this is a mature male. Now this guy has been mature for some time and uh, he has an absolutely ravenous appetite. And as you can see there, we feed him male dubia roaches. And the reason we do this is because the male dubia roach isn't as fat bodied. So it means that we can feed a little bit more often without getting the volume into our spider. And this prolongs the life of our male spider. This guy won't molt out anymore, he's fully mature. So we have to monitor his food intake. But you can see there with his abdomen, he's got a lovely shaped abdomen, but he's not fat. Now this is another Therophosa sturmi, and this is a young sub-adult male. So he's got another couple of molts to go before he's, uh, before he's mature. And again, an absolutely awesome feeding response from this guy. We find generally that um, all of the, the Therophosa have really, really good feeding responses. And you can see there with this one that we're actually feeding this one a giant hisser. And these are one of the few spiders that I will actually feed male giant hissers to that are full grown. And that's because these are such powerful spiders, they, they can cope with them really easily. I don't tend to feed them to other spiders. Not the, not the big male hissers. But as you can see there, this is a big fat bodied roach. This will put an awful lot of goodness into this spider. And it will bring him on for his molt. So the plan is here, he is literally a couple of molts away from being mature. And that should coincide with a couple of our females molting out, ready for breeding. So it's all about getting everything in the right order. Now this is one of my absolute favourites. The Chilabrachis Cayenne Kraken. Look at the beauty of that spider. <coughs> she is almost like a jet velvet black. She looks a little like the Gramostola pulchra, in terms of her colouring. She is absolutely beautiful. Now, as you can see there, she has got a, um, a giant hisser as well. But this, the one that we fed for her, this is a, um, a very young female. And they tend to be quite soft-bodied, um, not as spiny as the males. So she's more than capable of dealing with that. Um, without any trouble at all. And the reason that we're feeding her a giant hisser is because we're preparing her ready for breeding. So we're looking at getting her to bulk up a little bit. She recently molted out in this particular video. So she's, she's been molted um, maybe about two months now. And we can see there, she, you see he's kicking away a little bit there. Very, very strong. She's moving him off the web now. Such a beautiful, beautiful spider. Many people say about these being pet holes. 
this girl sits out all the time. Even when we've given her deep substrate, she sits outside. Very, very showy spider. And absolutely stunning. Definitely one of my favourites in the collection. I've had this girl a long time as well. And you can see there with her abdomen, we're trying to get a little bit more weight in her. She's very elongated. So we want to make that abdomen a little bit higher, a little bit taller. Then she'll be ready. Beautiful. Now this is our another male Sturmy. This is the one we actually started the video with. This, this, this is just another clip of him to show the speed of these big spiders. They are incredibly quick. There he is, he's got it. No hanging about. Absolutely wonderful. This guy never, ever fails. You can see there he's getting a bit tatty. Look at that. Bit of a tatty bum. It won't affect his performance, though. That is the main thing. Now, these are another really, really impressive spider for feed responses. The Pamphobetus species Cascada. Look at the speed of that little fella. Now, even when these are tiny, this is just a tiny sling. And... Uh, I mean, look, that roach is almost the size of our spider. That is a male red runner. And uh, I do like to feed the male red runners to our slings because they're very inoffensive. So they don't cause any damage to our sling. And should our sling ignore them for any length of time, they're not going to be a problem. Whereas a cricket that size could prove to be troublesome to a sling of this size. So it's something worth thinking about. Red runners are a very inoffensive food and are ideal for our young slings. Beautiful spider. Now here we have a Gramostola pulchra pulchra piece. Now this is a firm favourite in the hobby. And you can see now that colouring, very much like our Cayenne Kraken female. But with these guys, it's even deeper. It's got a shine to it. I mean, they are just absolutely stunning. This is only a youngster, um, and it's it's got some growing to do. But when these these are full grown, they are something else. Very big, heavy, heavily set, stocky spiders. Wonderful nature. Absolutely perfect beginner spider. You cannot go wrong with one of these. Now they do fetch good money. They're not they're not the cheapest of spiders, but. They are one of the best choices if you're getting into the hobby because they are so, they're rock steady. Very, very good spiders. That is a beautiful, beautiful spider. Now, here's another firm favourite the Chromatopelma cyanopubescens or the GBB. Now, uh, this one here is um, a young male. So he's still got a, a malt or two to go before he's mature. And uh, his roach is right down in the bottom there. Now these guys will actively hunt down their food. And there you go. He's pulled it out from behind that piece of cork bark. And as is pretty common with the GBB, they web absolutely everything up. And you'll see there, there's, there's silk continuously coming out of the rear end of this spider. Look at that beautiful green. These really are a very, very pretty spider. And under different lighting, they show up in different ways. And again, when these guys are young, they have awesome appetites. Now, because this is a male, we monitor his feeding. So um, we keep an eye on, on what he's taking in and how much he's taking so that we can coincide his maturing with our females and their molt cycles. So we're constantly trying to get them to pop at the same time. It's no good getting a male maturing when our females are halfway through their cycle because by the time they molt out and everything else, our males, you know, they're going to be, they're possibly going to be 
closer to the end of what they're doing. So we, we really, really try and get them to pop at the same time. Great shot there. Look at those fangs. His eyes. Now this is the one that's um, the, the Pteranoculus murinus. Now this guy's got an awesome reputation within the hobby, the OBT. Now we found here that they're not actually as bad as people make out. And uh, you've seen we have quite a few videos of pairing these guys, rehouses, and they behave themselves really well. You do need to show them a little bit of respect. But they're not the demons they're made out to be. And they are, in fact, if given the chance, have a close look. They're a very, very beautiful spider. Now, this is another firm favourite of mine. This is the Samopaeus Aminia. Absolutely beautiful. The Sun Tiger. The Venezuelan Sun Tiger. Look at the markings on those legs. And then as she comes up, you'll see the markings on the abdomen there. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Jet black when they're young. And as they grow older, they turn to a bit of a smoky black. They're a spider that just keeps getting better and better with age. Now this is one that causes a bit of a stir within the, the hobby. The Sicarius Themicides, or the Six-Eyed Sand Spider. Now these guys do have a, a potent venom. Um, but they're very, very reluctant to bite. So they don't actually cause us any concern as such. You do need to be careful. But there's never been an account of these guys actually biting a human. Um, but studies on their, on their venom have shown that they are very, very toxic. Very interesting spider. Constantly buried. But when you do see them and they come out, they burst out. To take their prey and there is actually a very very famous video of these on uh, on YouTube with a, a really good soundtrack and uh, very very entertaining to see great spider now here we have the Brachypelma behemi and what a stunner he is now I'm not Overly keen on the Brachypelmas, although they are some beautiful, beautiful spiders within this genus. Um, it's they, they, are, they take everything takes a long time at a Brachypelma, and I'm probably just a little impatient. But look how quick he jumped on that. This is a young male, and uh, you can see there that this guy, whereas the others have had sort of like reasonably sized prey, this guy has just had a cricket, and uh, and this is because we're holding him back. Uh, he's actually going to be sent off to a friend of friend of mine who's got a bunch of females and hopefully he will do the business. He is absolutely beautiful. Look at him. Stunning colouring. Now you regulars will recognise this girl. This is our, uh, our large Anastascuria geniculata, the Brazilian giant white knee. And she is always hungry. Never fails. Now, unfortunately, we did breed her this year. And uh, she promptly ate her sack about three quarters of the way through. So um, we only had about another week to go and we would have uh, opened it up. And uh, she ate it. And we've had a bit of a run of that this year with uh, our females eating their sacks. And we're not 100% sure what has brought this behaviour on. Um, hopefully things will settle down and we'll get back to normal. But another firm favourite in the hobby, and I, I consider these a great beginner spider. Really cool spiders. Now then, this is this is one that gets a lot of attention. The piece of Theria Metallica, or the Gucci Ornamental. How about that for colouring? Now this particular girl here is actually getting near the end She's getting close to her uh, malt cycle, so she's not looking as banging as she should do. You can see a second roach there. That's gone down there. That was a bad move on that roach's part. <laughs> Here we have a baby, tiny, tiny sling of the Macrotheli gigas. Look at the fangs on that guy. 
and we fed him a maggot there, and that maggot is as big as he is. But maggots are first-class food because they, they are so inoffensive. They won't cause him any trouble at all, and you get a lot of goodness. The Neotheli Incy Gold. Now, this is a spider that I am very, very fond of. And uh, it's only a tiny, tiny spider. It's a little dwarf spider, full grown. We're looking at around about two inches if we're lucky. But what a colour. And we have actually got a pairing of our Neotheliensi golds coming up, I believe, next week. So stay tuned. It's a stunning piece of filming. Really shows them off well and it shows their colouring. They really are a very, very underrated spider. Which is strange because they're they're common, they're cheap, you know, they're really cool. You see this one's got another maggot. Ideal food for these tiny, tiny slings. Massive fangs on that guy. Now here we have, this is a, a tiny sling, Sicarius. And uh, the six-eyed sand spider. And you can see there we're using a maggot again. We like the maggots with these tiny, tiny slings. Very, very cool. He's in there somewhere. Can you spot him? There he is. Now, talking of venom, there you go. He's bit him. Look at how quick that venom worked on that maggot. That has pretty much nailed that maggot within a second or two. So it shows the toxicity of these spiders. They are very, very strong venom. And you can see there, that, that maggot has gone from tearing around to pretty immobile. Very impressive. Now this is another spider that we're hoping to do well with, the Harmonicon Oyopog. Um, this is a sort of curtain web spider, very similar to the Phalax. You don't see many of these around, and they're not bred in this country at all, as far as I'm aware. And uh, we have a number of these, and we're hoping to do a, a really cool breeding program with these guys. They fascinate me. I think they're absolutely stunning. Look at those spinnerets. Those spinnerets are the same length as the abdomen. Absolutely huge. This is a female, an adult female. And uh, we should hopefully, hopefully, have some males coming up through the ranks very, very soon. So look out for those. Now this is um, a young blondie. As you can see, she has just taken on a, a, um, a, a large giant hisser. And again, they do not mess around. These are such powerful spiders and remarkably fast for a large spider. They often catch people out with the speed in which they can move. So you do have to be a little bit careful of your hands when operating around these guys. They also can be very bad with the hair kicking. And they've got very, very potent hairs. So um, try and be careful. And if, if you're careful with the way you manage them, you can limit that hair kicking. There you go. Back to the sanctuary of her burrow. Lovely spider. We have a good breeding project in, in store for these. Now then, one of my favourite things, the Scolopendra galapagonensis. This is the giant Darwin's centipede. And this girl here is around about 10 inches, maybe a little bit more. And she's just grabbed a male dubia roach. And... Uh, the reason we feed the male roaches to our giant centipedes is because the male roaches are active. So quite often, if you throw a female dubia into your enclosure, the first thing it does is bury itself away. With a male, he will in fact run around and explore, which is ideal because our centipede is hidden away in there somewhere. And he will hear and feel that roach running around and will come out to investigate and hunt for him. And this is what we like to see. We like to encourage that natural behaviour. We can actually tong feed this girl as well. She's very, very well behaved and an absolute stunning spider. We will show a little bit more footage in the future of her out and about. 
but I thought this was a nice one because it showed her almost in her natural habitat. Absolutely beautiful beasts, the centipede. Now this is a, a Pamphobetus species Machala male and uh, he's not fully mature yet this guy so he's just coming through but he's um, he's he's literally starting to show some colouring now and again a really aggressive feeder now the panther species the uh, pamphobetus um, genus are a group of large spiders so we're looking at our females getting out to six seven inches without any problem at all and our males the males in this particular genus all of them absolutely stunning colors very very pretty now we have actually uh, bred our um, machala we paired her again with a different male this is an old bit of footage that we got here when well, we've done with a new male so look out for that one that's coming in the next week or two. And he is an absolute stunner. Now then, the, the Tiltacati Vagans. Now this is a spider that I've never really taken a lot of notice of, but I've since fallen in love with this one. Very, very pretty. Now we've got um, a couple of these now, and we have actually paired them. So that video is coming very soon and um, hopefully you'll see a little bit of what they're about they really are a gorgeous spider and a great beginner spider too perfect now here we have our near 30 inch gold adult female and that's a female red runner there bang she's got it no hanging around whatsoever no messing about. As we were saying earlier on, the pairing video of these is coming out next week. So it's going to be a very, very cool, very cool video. There's some lovely footage, shows them off beautifully. And like we said before, very underrated spider. I think everyone should have one of these. Great beginner spiders. Beautiful. And then last off, we have our another Brachypelma, the Oratum. And this really is a pretty spider. Now, this is a, a young female. You can see there's a male dubia in there. And uh, she's got a bit of growing to do. But she, she has got a phenomenal appetite. And as you can see, she's very quick. I really should give these guys a little bit more credit because they are one of the most, one of the most prettiest spiders going. They really are very, very nice. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get a few more in the beastie room and see what we can do with those. Very, very cool. Lovely spiders. And again, another great beginner spider too. Well then, what did you think? Slightly different. A little bit of a different format, this one. Um... And it seems uh, it's, it's interesting, actually, when you consider that, um, like some of our male spiders, there have got ferocious appetites. They really are keen. You know, they'll they'll eat and eat and eat. Um, and you have to be careful. Same with some of the females. Some of them will literally just put food away time and time again. Now um, we saw there were some tiny slings there. We feed them slightly differently. You know, they often get fed a little bit more or more often than some of our older stuff. Our older stuff, we can drag them out. Sometimes we might feed them maybe once a fortnight. Some of them only take food every couple of months. So, you know, don't be panicking if your spider doesn't eat. These things are not, um, you know, spiders are, are an opportunist animal. And by that, it means that if food should come along, nine times out of ten, they will take the opportunity to take it and they'll, they'll feed, they'll grab it and eat. But sometimes, some of them can fast for huge amounts of time. We have a um, Cancerides female. Um, she's getting old now. We've had her probably seven years. She was adult when, when we got her. Um, so, yeah, she's getting on a little bit now. But she has, in the past, 
fasted for over 18 months. And that's no food at all for 18 months and she didn't lose an ounce of condition. She stayed exactly the same looking at the end of that as she did at the beginning. So it's really, really quite incredible. These spiders are very, very clever at actually being able to lock down their, their usage of their energy. And they can literally use none at all. They can cut it right down to absolutely barely breathing, as it were. You know, and that way they're not using any energy at all. Now, um, we quite often get asked, you know, oh, I've had my spider a week, it's not been feeding. Or I've had it, you know, a month and it's not touched its food. There may be many reasons why your spider's not eating. It could purely be down to the fact that it's got a molt coming on. Quite often our spiders, once they're coming into molt, they will stop feeding. And this is purely because it's, you know, they're, they're going through a massive change. So nine times out of ten, when a molt's imminent, you will normally see them, they will tuck themselves away, they will seal themselves in behind something or in their favourite hide, and they'll cover everything up. And then that way, you know, is to stop predators getting in and attacking them. So they're looking after themselves, they're protecting themselves. So it's very, very important that we leave them alone when they're in stages like that. Now, obviously, when they're like that, they're not going to feed. If you've got small slings that are actually being in there, then we don't tend to feed them when they're coming up to molt because a cricket, believe it or not, can kill a small sling. So you have to be very, very careful in how you go about feeding and what you feed and when you feed it. But whatever you do, don't panic because your spider's not had its last meal. If they turn it down, there could be many, many reasons why they've done that. And they don't have to be bad reasons. It's not a, a slur on your husbandry or how you're keeping your spider, you know. So don't be panicking about it. You know, these guys are made to last long periods of time with no food. Also, no water. So they can survive in very, very harsh conditions. It's not ideal which is why we try and keep the optimum to our, you know, our ability. We do the very best that we can. And this is something that's, that's most, most important. And we have to get our heads around it. As new keepers, we need to understand that spiders, they're not like puppies. You know, they don't run around all the time. Sometimes a spider may sit in one spot for weeks on end and never, ever move. You know, we have some here. We don't ever see them. You know, the occasional spider, never ever see it. And yet, we know it's well. The food disappears, and every few months or whatever, maybe six months or so, we might dig them up or, you know, check them out, see what they're doing. But generally speaking, we don't need to be worrying about that kind of thing. So they are designed to, you know, deal with these things as and when the time requires. So try not to panic, and try and just have a little bit of faith in your husbandry if you're doing everything correctly you know you should be okay um, and the way we can check that is by just checking our spider's general um, thing so to make sure that he's actually um, you know generally doing everything he should be doing so you just check your parameters your heating your temperature things like that and then everything else should be fine but yeah apart from that just enjoy feeding your spider but don't overfeed him <laughs> Right, I hope you enjoyed that, and um, we will have another one in the future, because um, these do seem very, very popular. And I think we might do one, we've got some nice footage of some centipedes. So uh, we may do a centipede video, and uh, throw in some of our other bits and pieces in there with it as well. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that little video, uh, something a bit different. Until next time, don't forget, be calm, be gentle. And love your spider. I will see you soon, guys. <laughs>